years ago when I started learning about what the Amanita wanted and the kind of mushroom it was and how it was teaching me about these earth-based practices. I made a lot of videos back then, but my channel was really small and all of you weren't here. So I thought I would sort of catch you up in general to the whole concept of why I do what I do, because I came into this a very science-based person. I still am, but oh, the world of mushrooms, my God, the things that they teach us and that they open us up to, it's just crazy. It's beautiful. Amanita muscaria is the mushroom of earth. It is the mushroom of being human, of the life earth experience in the space-time continuum and the sacredness of it, the purpose of it, the beauty in it, and the larger picture of Earth itself as a place to be, and the experience of the connectedness of being human, and the importance of us connecting with each other and the other living things, the balance of the ecosystem as a whole, and the beauty in all of it. And then I use psilocybin, which gives me that bigger perspective of Earth and its place and why I'm here and the work that I'm doing and all of that stuff. But while we're here, the Amanita wants us to be fully human. And so when I first came into Amanita, one of the very first things that it started showing me was the importance of time, inner time, internal time, Earth time that we are the creators and writers of time in our own way that we see time and live time and that it's just as unique as each individual. The idea of ritual, like an evening ritual, an evening tea, using Amanita in this ritualistic way. And indeed you'll notice Amanita is the one thing that is the most ritualized, not just when you use it, but it feels like there's this just devotion to it, to drawing it, to honoring it. To creating art with it and then also the this entire sort of practice around it whereas the other entheogens it's a ritual when you actually use it you know what i mean we are social but unlike the other great apes or the other social animals whales dolphins and a lot of other mammals is that for us to be fully healthy there are these other extra things that we do. So in addition to our connection as humans, the way we barter, swap, trade, groom each other, touch each other and need touch and social interaction and the way that we uh, interact socially. In addition to that though, we do art and we express and create, but we worship, ritualize and ceremony. And that is something very uniquely human, unless there are other societal animals that that engage in, in their version of ritual. Uh, it's, it's mostly like a human thing. And the I didn't really pay attention to this. I used to think that it was humans trying to create a sense of order in a world that seemed chaotic. And it was a, it was a way of dealing with fear and once we understood how things worked and what to truly fear and what not to fear with science, then ritual and all of that stuff would sort of become extinct or this relic of the past and an unnecessary part of life. Boy, I couldn't have been more wrong. And I get it now. I fully am grounded in the need for ritual and ceremony. It's beautiful to me how the Amanita have shown me this isn't about worshiping a deity. This isn't about a religion. This isn't about some code or belief system. It's about understanding your connection, that you are inextricar inextricably connected to the larger bodies of space that they have a pull on you in connection and combination with all of your human ancestors who were ritualizing the passing of time and marking actual practical concerns. So like less daylight in the winter time and going inside caves and inside longhouses and being sort of closed in and that those were good times for repairing things 
and doing bead work and making connections and talking out uh, communal and group issues and problem solving. And it could be a more fearful time with less daylight. Those things have happened for so, so long in our genetics and in our history that our bodies have not had time to evolve out of those practices and those memories and those rituals and those feelings. So we are connected. And right now, while we are still very closely connected to that, it makes us wonky and mentally ill when our bodies expect these practices, when the movement of other planetary bodies are pulling on our bodies and we are not moving along with it, but living sort of confused by it and afraid of it and then kind of perplexed by what we're feeling. All of this, in addition to our toxicity and our fighting and our emotional shit, and in addition to no longer using entheogens so that they can't do their jobs, like all of this stacks us up to being mentally ill. And so it's like a big picture thing. It's not just use the mushroom. It's not just use ceremony. It's all of it. And one of the things that I finally learned and understood in all of this is I would feel something. I would feel confused. I would feel overwhelmed and exhausted. I would feel pressure. And I would use Amanita and Amanita would start giving me lessons and talking to me and saying, you need to hurry up and finish these things. Um, you, you really need to start cooking food ahead and it's time for this, it's time for that, whatever, these communications with the, with the mushroom. And then I would go online and I guess the algorithm would serve me up earth-based practice stuff and they would be echoing exactly what I was feeling. And they, it wasn't always the same, It you know, depending on the time of year that it was, I'm like, that's exactly how I'm feeling. I, I would wake up and all of a sudden everything would be lifted and I would feel like so much better. And then they would say, have you noticed that you feel, you woke up today feeling better and lighter or whatever? That's because there was a moon last night and the moon represents this. And now that it's passed, it's taking the energy with it. And you should have moved a lot of this out and dealt with it emotionally. And I'm like, oh my God, that's really weird. Big difference between that and just making shit up. And yes, it is general. I get that. And there, there's a cognitive bias to trying to make a story fit. This isn't that. I'm understanding now there is a general current of energy in the global consciousness of humans that have been doing this for thousands and thousands and thousands of years that we have collected this global consciousness of moving energy this time of year and with the passing of the season. So just say like the full moon right now, we know the moon affects us, emergency rooms get busy or crime goes up. Our bodies get affected by that push and pull of the moon. If that's happening when the seasons are shifting and like now we're in fall, then generally, globally, with billions of humans on the planet and that number slowly increasing over time, and all of us are always feeling this impending sense of urgency of gosh, we got a lot of you know food to harvest, things are blooming, blossoming, fruiting, mushrooms everywhere. It's time to gather all this stuff up. It's time to fix any holes in the roofs of our shelters. It, and there's so much work to do. Like everyone, it's all hands on deck because we're working toward finishing up goals, liaisons, ideas, connections, the busy working open, lots of light time of year this full moon pulling energy, it's just pulling energy, but it's pulling whatever energy's going on in that month for us as humans. Do you see what I'm saying? So it's not as much bullshit as it sounds like on the surface. Anyway, I wanted to teach you about this because when you read my newsletters and I'm educating you every month about why you might be feeling the way you're feeling and how to put it to good use, the whole reason I'm doing that is to help you work with your body. That it's not just you. You're, you know what I mean? You're in good company, you're being human. And that all of this is about healing and living in harmony again. And that living in balance and harmony is about embracing all of it. You've gotta go back to everything your body needs to be human here fully in a really healthy way. That includes then 
in addition to using the mushroom, having rituals, which I go into in my book, having rituals and paying attention to the movement of the heavenly bodies around us, the solstices, the equinoxes, and the moons as they are in motion and working with each other. And I wanted to explain this to you in a way that you would understand it. I don't get anything by you reading my newsletter. I, that is my one way to talk in detail about something that's not necessarily Amanita related. My videos don't do well on this particular subject. It's my way of saying, hey, this is what I'm doing. This is how I'm healing. This is what the mushroom is teaching me. And yes, while that does have to do with Amanita, it's so much off topic that it just, I put a little bit of it on the channel, but not a lot. So the newsletter is my way of telling you, this is what I'm doing with all this stuff. Here's how you can move with it and move that energy and work with that energy for yourself. You know what I mean? The next video that I'm gonna make after this one that I'm gonna stick in the same playlist is about the importance of drums and drumming and drum ceremony and fire and how to build a drum ceremony in your area if you can't find one. So I hope that you like the series and that it supports you and gives you just, you know, this bigger picture of how I am learning to work with the mushroom and what Amanita muscaria and the psilocybes are teaching me about the beauty of being human and the beauty of being on earth and relaxing into it instead of fighting it or being confused by it. I hope it serves you well. I love you beautiful people. Bye.